I will want to moving on request the pleasure of asking her to come to the microphone to take us on an overview of resilience and it will be done by the Deputy Chief Resilience Officer DCRO Dr. Folayinka Dania to please uh, take us through this part in understanding the overview of resilience in Lagos State. Dr. Dania, please. Good morning, Mr. Governor, members of the Lagos State House of Assembly, honorable commissioners, permanent secretaries, traditional rulers, white cat chiefs, all other protocols duly observed. My name is Dr. Falayan Kadania, and I'll be giving a brief overview of what we mean by resilience. We've been talking about resilience, 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 but what does this really mean? So resilience for us is defined as the capacity of institutions, businesses, communities, systems within a city to survive, adapt, and grow, no matter what kind of chronic shocks, chronic acute shocks, or chronic stresses the city experiences or might experience. So the next question is, what exactly are shocks? So shocks are things that, are sudden sharp events that threaten a city, such as fire outbreaks, like the ones we've had in Lagos Island, building collapse, just like the one we also had in Lagos Island. And these are things that are short, sudden sharp that you cannot plan for or you don't know when they would happen. Stresses, on the other hand, are things that weaken the fabric of a city on a day-to-day -day basis, such as traffic congestion, erratic power supply, things that affect our businesses, and basically have great impact on us on a day-to-day -day basis. So where does resilience come in for us? We're saying, in building the resilience of a city, as in whatever interventions that need to be put in place to build a city, to build the resilience of a city, they need to have resilience qualities. What do we mean by this? They need to be reflective, meaning that we need to learn from past experiences. Whatever it is that we're proposing as interventions, have they worked in the past? Why did they work? Have they failed in the past? Why did they fail? Have we learned from the things that have happened, or are we repeating the same things over and over again and expecting a different outcome? Whatever interventions we're proposing need to be resourceful, meaning that we need to recognize that there are alternative ways of using the same resource. For instance, you might have a nurse in a hospital. Her duties are well assigned, but can she also play another role where there is no doctor? Yes, she can which is what the health sector currently does in its tax shifting, tax sharing policy, saying that where there's no doctor, a nurse is present, there are some things that she can do, so she can serve more than one purpose. The interventions need to be robust, meaning that they need to be well-conceived, constructed, and managed systems that are designed in a way that if they fail, the failure is predictable, and you can quickly implement something, as in to address that. The interventions need to be redundant, meaning that you need to provide some spare capacity purposely to accommodate disruptions. Please, how many of us have generators in our house? If you have a generator, please raise your hand up. We don't have generators. Okay, so NEPA PHCN is performing 100% well. Okay, please, can we clap for PHCN? So basically what we're saying is the generator in your house is a it's supposed to be a redundant infrastructure, meaning that it is what is supposed to kick in where there's a service disruption. So that is what we mean by it must be redundant. We're saying those interventions must be flexible, meaning that you need to understand that there are some times that you need to adopt alternate strategies in response to changing circumstances. The interventions need to be inclusive, meaning that you need to consult a broad range of stakeholders. You need to bring everyone that is supposed to be involved in implementing whatever it is that you are proposing to the table so that there is a sense of shared ownership. 
And finally, the inter interventions need to be integrated, meaning that we need to break the silos and bring different institutions together. So basically, what we're saying is, in whatever interventions that we're proposing, we need to put a resilience lens to it. We need to approach the challenge in an integrated and holistic way that crosses silos. We need to also consider the impact of multiple shocks and stresses on whatever it is that we are proposing, and also the impact that whatever it is that we are proposing has on multiple shocks and stresses. Whatever interventions that we are proposing need to have short-term, medium-term, and long-term benefits, meaning we want to enjoy it today. We want to use it to plan for tomorrow also, as in for things that might happen in the future. We need to aim for equitable outcomes, so not just for the rich, but also for the poor to benefit. We need to leverage the actions of a broad range of stakeholders. And finally, we need to consider cross-jurisdictional implications whether they be intercity, regional, national, or global. Thank you very much.